Hi, this is Helal. In this video on Mathematical Economic Series, we will learn about the solo model and we will try to derive the fundamental equation of the solo model. Okay. So first of all, in our solo model, uh, we are being given an aggregate production function. That is, our production function is given by that is y is equal to f of k l. Okay. This is our aggregate production function okay there are some assumptions in the solo model first assumption is that uh, what we call that there is constant returns to scale in our production function okay by constant returns to scale it simply means uh, let me write it here if um, if capital that is capital is increased by a factor let us say lambda okay capital increases to lambda k okay uh, and L that is labor increases by a factor let us say by same factor that is lambda uh, L that means our output output will be equal to that is F of lambda K lambda L and if we just uh, take lambda out that means we have F of uh, K L Okay, that means our new output will increase also by a factor lambda. And you can think uh, it like this. If capital uh, increases, uh, let us say capital is doubled, that means if lambda is doubled, so if we have k is increased, it becomes 2k. Okay, our labor is also doubled, it becomes 2l. Then what does this mean? This simply means here if we can see y is equal to f of uh, 2k and 2l and if we take uh, this uh, two common so we have 2 f of k l that means our new output will also get doubled so we have uh, twice f of k l okay so this is one of the assumption of the solo model that we have constant returns to scale okay uh, so let me rub this out it will be uh, more of the mathematical okay so another uh, a very important uh, assumption in the solo model is that uh, people save a constant proportion of their income. That means uh, by constant proportion, that means let us denote S by savings. So savings is a uh, constant proportion of income. So S is equal to S Y. Okay. So we have a constant savings rate. This is second assumption. Another assumption is that we, uh, uh, sorry, that labor supply grows at exogenously given growth rate. Okay, so we have exogenously given growth rate of the labor supply and we denote it by N. Okay, so it is given to us as exogenous thing here. Okay, also we are being told that uh, in the solo model, the assumption, another assumption is that there is no foreign trade, we have a closed economy there is no government intervention and i have told you that we have the constant returns to scale uh, in this case so these are uh, the assumptions and another imp uh, important assumption is that we have uh, that is labor supply is homogeneous by homogeneity we mean there is no difference between white collar jobs or blue collar jobs okay that uh, if i can uh, co uh, correctly tell uh, to you that it simply means uh, elon musk is as productive uh, in terms of labor as a factory worker okay so there is no uh, heterogeneity in the labor we have the same uh, homogeneous uh, labor okay so there is no difference between white collar or blue collar jobs so productivity is same okay so these were some assumptions and we will just try to derive the so fundamental uh, you know the equation of solo model okay so we are being given the aggregate production function for the economy it has constant returns to scale so first what will we do here so let me take the pen mark so we have what will we see uh, we will divide this aggregate production function by l okay so this will become y upon l is equal to f of k upon l okay l upon l okay so what does this y upon uh, l means it says us output labor ratio or output per worker so if i write it by small letter y that means uh, this output per worker is a function of so we have 
k upon l that means capital labor ratio that means output per worker is a function of capital labor ratio and i have denoted it by small k okay and uh, in this model we uh, sometimes uh, write income uh, synonym uh, synonymously uh, with output okay uh, we can write y as output uh, y as income or q as output and it is both same here okay so this very thing tells us that output per worker is a function of capital labor ratio okay now uh, what we need to do let's write it uh, again here so small k is our capital labor ratio so i will write k upon l so i am just writing this very uh, uh, relationship uh, here what will uh, we do we just uh, will we will take the log of this very thing okay that means log of uh, small k is equal to log of capital k minus log of capital l okay so how do we get uh, this if we have m upon n if we need to take log of this m upon n it is simply equal to log of m minus log of n and it is very simple thing here i hope you know this very thing so now after that what we need to do we just need to uh, take the derivative of uh, this very expression uh, with respect to time okay if we take the derivative with respect to time that means uh, d upon dt of this is ln which is log ln of k small k should be equal to d upon dt of this ln capital k minus d upon dt of this log ln l okay capital l okay so we just need to take the derivative here or we can uh, write it like this here so we can write it like this dk upon dt uh, log of k is 1 upon small k okay and that is the derivative of this log of k is equal to this so here we have also dk d capital k here upon dt uh, into 1 upon capital k okay minus uh, dk upon dt that means sorry dl upon dt here d capital l upon dt into 1 upon l okay now here one thing uh, we need to see here this very thing this shows us the growth rate of the labor and it is exogenously given us so in place of this very thing i can write n okay or uh, let's write it again here so let us write k hat is equal to capital k hat minus l hat okay now this l hat as i told you uh, this thing is being given us as exogenous variable and this growth rate is as i told you is equal to n okay n denotes the growth rate of the labor here okay now this term here this uh, dk upon dt so let me write it here here at uh, this dk upon dt what does this tell us it simply tells us change in the capital stock with respect to time so change in capital stock what does that denote that denotes our investment okay we know this is equal to investment change in capital stock over a period of time is denoted by the investment and in the higher order number sorry uh, in the solo model we assume that investment is equal to saving so i will write s okay and i have told you that uh, people save a constant proportion of their income let us write it uh, savings is equal to small s okay small s upon small s into uh, y will give us the savings okay and this y this can be also written as s q because i have told you we can write q or y synonymously here okay now what will be our equation then let me uh, write it here so we can write uh, this very equation this very equation again so we have k head small k head is equal to so this capital k head so since this very thing dk upon dt is equal to sq so in place of this i will write s q upon and we have this k obviously uh, in the denominator and this is capital k here okay i'm just trying to 
this is small this is capital so let me write it uh, bold and bigger to differentiate it uh, with this uh, small k okay minus this is exogenously given growth rate of labor so we will denote it by n okay everything is correct up to uh, this now and we can do another thing if we denote, divide this very uh, term uh, by l uh, to numerator and denominator so this will become let me divide it here so this will become s q upon l i am just dividing numerator and denominator by l so we have k upon l this is capital a yeah? minus n and this can be written as our k here small k actually it is here is equal to s this is a marginal propensity to save q upon l that means output labor ratio or output per worker and we will denote it by small q okay so let me write it here so q upon k output per worker uh, we will denote it by small q okay upon this is capital labor ratio denoted by small k okay minus n okay or we can write it like this uh, s small s f of small k okay because q is equal to this very f of k as we have seen uh, earlier here upon this small k again minus n this is our fundamental equation of solo model okay and here we get this k t uh, sorry this k here that is the growth rate of the capital labor ratio we got it in terms of capital labor ratio itself because we have this k on this uh, side also on rhs side okay so i hope everything is fine up to this now now at equilibrium the equilibrium value of uh, equilibrium value of uh, k will be this k head uh, will be that means at equilibrium our k head should be equal to i am not able to differentiate between uh, small k k so let me write it like this this k head should be equal to zero okay so this very thing should be equal to zero if this very thing is equal to zero what uh, what we are being left so we are um, asking about the equilibrium le level of this k so that means uh, that simply mean, means s f k star small k star okay k star uh, denotes the equilibrium value okay so equilibrium level of uh, capital labor ratio upon this k star okay should be equal to n okay if this very thing is equal to zero so if we just transpose this to rhs it should be equal to n here oh and we can just manipulate it uh, like this we can write it like this sq sq star okay in place of f of k i have written sq star uh, should be equal to this is n into k star n into k star okay so at equilibrium sq uh, should be equal to n k obviously at their uh, equilibrium values okay or we can write it like, again like this s f uh, k star uh, should be equal to n k star okay these are small k's here okay which denote uh, the uh, capital uh, labor ratio obviously okay now uh, let's uh, try to grab this out also and we see the graphical interpretation of this very thing okay so uh, let me draw the graph here i hope mr tagan samjhaun you it is um, more of the mathematical thing okay so we have nk let's write this nk okay and let's uh, draw our this is f of k fk that means capital labor ratio and we have the savings function also here so let me draw the savings function like this 
so this is our s uh, fk okay now as we have told that at equilibrium this k head should be equal to zero that means our steady state level of capital will be at this point which denotes our k star okay this is our k star okay and obviously we have k that is capital labor ratio on the what we call this horizontal axis or x axis and we have output per worker on vertical axis okay now uh, at any point uh, to the left of k so at any point to the left of k star okay at any point uh, to the left of k star uh, so let me write it here at any point any point uh, left to left to k star okay our k is obviously less than k star okay k will be less than k star okay any number here if we have k here this this k is less than this uh, steady state k star okay this means uh, our f of k small k should be greater than should be greater than if we just uh, uh, you know take this uh, to the rhs so this will become nk or n upon s k okay so uh, any point which is left to uh, left to this uh, thing at that point we have this f of k and here we can see this f of k should be greater than this n upon s k okay this implies we can also write it like this s f k if we just take this k uh, here again these are small k's uh, obviously should be greater than n okay and what does this very thing tells us it simply this s denotes this very uh, s denotes our savings okay this denotes the savings so i will write here this is savings and uh, this is savings and this denotes output uh, labor ratio or i will write uh, uh, sorry output uh, per worker sfk so savings into uh, output per worker upon capital labor ratio capital labor ratio if it is greater than n okay this means this is greater than n this very thing i have just tried to uh, interpret uh, these very things so any point to the left of this case star this very thing holds up okay and from this equation okay from in this uh, from sorry from this equation we can see it simply means when our k is less than k star okay this k hat k hat uh, it is also small okay this k hat increases okay that means when k is less than k star this k star should uh, k hat should increase so that we reach to this back to this very steady state level of uh capital this k okay and similarly whenever uh, let me write here whenever uh, k is greater than k star okay when is when is k greater than k star when we are on this side okay when k is greater than k, k star similarly here we can see if k is greater than k star this simply means uh, uh our s f k s of k upon k is less than the population growth rate so this thing saving is into output per worker upon capital labor ratio is less than the growth rate of population and whenever this very thing happens whenever this very thing happens that means our 
k hat is falling okay so k hat is falling and uh, obviously uh, then the stable equilibrium will be only that very point where let me write here when our k is equal to k star okay or when our output q is equal to q star okay so this denotes here q star i hope i make myself clear in this video it was about uh, the solo model and how do we derive the fundamental uh, equation of the solo model and let me repeat it uh, again what i have done here first of all uh, we have the assumptions of the solo model let me repeat it here for the sake of uh, simplicity first uh, assumption was that our labor supply was homogeneous okay by homogeneous labor supply we mean there is no difference between uh, white collar jobs okay white collar jobs or blue collar jobs and i know you people know it very well it simply says uh, that jeb bezos is as uh, productive as a factory worker or a mill worker okay so there is homogeneity uh, homogeneity of labor okay this is one the one of the assumption of the solo model another assumption was that labor supply or labor or population labor grows because l and n are here synonymous labor supply uh, labor and population growth rate grows uh, at at n exogenously exogenously given given growth rate okay by n okay and also it simply means a uh, labor supply uh, growth rate of population at any point of time is equal to uh, this is equal to actually it is being given by an equation that is l not i hope uh, it is correct uh, e to the power nt okay this is the growth rate of population and it is given by n okay another uh, assumption of the solo model was that we have a production aggregate production function which exhibits constant returns to scale okay that simply means if we double if we increase our labor or if we double our labor sorry capital labor is also doubled it becomes 2l then our let us say originally our y was equal to f of uh, kl okay when we increase these by uh, a factor of 2 that means f is equal to y is equal to f of uh, 2k 2l which is equal to 2 f of uh, k and l that means if uh, out inputs are doubled our output will also get doubled that is meant by constant returns to scale okay and this is all obviously called the homogeneous of degree zero or one i am not uh, um, completely able to uh, recall i am just getting confused with zero and one so simply we are constant returns to spare as a scale when if we uh, double the inputs if our output also gets doubled that means constant returns to scale okay and uh, another assumption was uh, that we have no foreign trade we have a closed economy there is no government intervention okay how do we uh, then derive the solo equation first we wrote the aggregate production function after that we wrote it in the intensive form by intensive form we mean we divided each of the variable by l that means the number of workers or labors in the economy so y upon l gives us output per worker is a function of capital labor ratio l upon l is equal to one so i have not written it here so this very equation tells us that uh, output per worker or income per worker is a function of capital labor ratio okay after that we write k is equal to k upon l small k is equal to capital k upon capital l after that we take the log on both sides just to uh, differentiate with respect to time and we got this very relationship between them okay after that since uh, this very thing dk upon dt tells us the change in the capital stock over a time and change in capital stock is nothing but investment and investment in the solo model is equal to savings and we have assumed that people uh, save as i 
I forgot to write here assumption uh, another that uh, we are being told that there is a savings is equal to marginal property propensity to save into y that means people save a fixed proportion of their income okay so this thing is equal to dk upon dt is equal to investment which in turn is equal to s which is equal to small s into y and this y and q are synonymous here okay so after that k hat is equal to sq upon l sq upon k minus n okay and denotes the growth rate of the labor or population after that we just uh, divided numerator and denominator uh, to this very uh, term by l and we got a k hat is equal to s q upon k minus n which is equal to s f k upon k minus n okay after that we just um, showed what happens if we are to the left of the steady state level of uh, capital or what happens if we are to the right of the steady state level of capital and we have seen it here what are meant by other things here okay i hope i i am just try i i just try to give it um uh, a try and i hope uh, you appreciate this work if you like these videos please share with your friends that's only motivation for me to keep going on thank you